it's not, not assassin, a good they can mean alpha bane. But it's still yeah, it's still behind. Yeah. It has yeah. to be. But I think they were thinking about it. It's like, is this still gonna be okay for us? It might be a little bit harder. Yeah, because earlier it was a little hard, especially if Ling goes Temps of Blades, especially if the Lunox goes brilliant. Yeah. It's so hard to catch anybody, honestly. Ooh. All right. I don't know. There's something about the cheesiness of seeing Bellaric and Loyi together that makes me lean a little bit more towards that. And even our draft in the index thinks the same. Yeah, I think the I think Omega has a pretty good. Yeah. Look, look at all those stats, dude. Early to late potential, damage potential, survival potential, all higher than RSG Philippines. They do seem like they have it covered, right? For RSG, it's again, you kind of have to make the picks happen for this yeah. lineup to work. Yeah, make the picks happen. 100%. Yeah. Let's see if that's going to happen as we throw it over to the Land of Dawn. Let's see if RSG can take it. Caster is going there. Ooh, yeah! Ukir is back for the Barangay in a shocking turn of events. Welcome with to RSG Mobile Legends! Match point. I'm pretty sure the coaches said, you know what? We can't risk it. Can't, can't. Again, the standings for Omega are at stake here as much as possible. You want to be closer to the upper bracket. And for RSG, this is a do or die match. Because right now, currently, Blacklist is ahead of them with one point. Because of how week six went and yeah. then week seven, RSG, they're not pulling out any of the stops. You see how very similar to game one this draft is? So they're going very clearly off of momentum. And as a momentum stopper, Chaknu brings out the Belleric. Yeah. It's just Kosei with the Moscov instead of a Claude. And I do like this Luyi uh, Belleric combination. We've seen this earlier. Uh, during the earlier weeks of uh, the season, wherein Okir's gonna use the diversion just to send out Chaknu onto the back line, then cast that ultimate to make sure there's crowd control enough for the barangay. You can make like Groot, I am Groot, and then just let the rest of Omega rain down Heavenly Fire, which is gonna come mostly in the form of magic damage, which is one of the main things that's irking me about Omega's draft. Again, you'll see that our stats, the index, will tell you that the stats should favor them, but looking at RNG and the way they played in game one, something tells me all they gotta do is just follow that same path. They just have to play the same way, which could be a double-edged sword because Omega now understand that, hey, they're playing very clearly off of Nibor. Nibor has to hit the amazing final, final slash. slashes from out of nowhere. Light can jump in AOG at any point. Ira, this is clearly a different beast today. Yeah, super. So, that said, you know, his MVP performance cannot be forgotten. Let's see how the tides have changed. Game two, second turtle, I'm pretty sure Omega won't want to be a reactive team anymore. Yeah, he really woke up good on, uh, on the good side of his bed right now. And also during game number one, he had three kills early on, specifically on to Burnok. So Irad, if you want RSG to have a slight advantage, especially coming into the early game, he needs to be activated early. A while ago, they got all objectives, I believe, game yep. one. Yep, everything, everything. Not a single turtle or lord to the barangay. Turtles already spawns. Upper corner of the map, you'll see here. Okay, Chaknu's level There's four. A diversion, sending him over. Okay, they're gonna send out Chaknu. Here comes the movement speed, but look at Neymar with the final slash catch, plus the Oiki shadow kill. Just the damage is enough for RSG, but Adoryu will still get the turtle as he uses Temples of Blades. AOG coming in from light, but look at this. Aqua's gonna fall down. Ryota, Okir, and Adoryu. A trade for the turtle, but RSG gets three kills. Light's taunt just ruins everything for Smart Omega. I was staring at the fight in about five seconds and I'm like, wait, why, why aren't they dealing the right kind of damage? Why is it just Aqua, who's at the verge of death and eventually does eventually fall? Why is that the case? It's because mainly Light did his job. Light, oh. Light, Light got a majority of kills. No, no, Aqua! Oh, Joe! Bursts down Aqua once again. He just literally respawned. Big J! Big J! That's a big meme, by the way, on social media. It's like me walking back to mid as if nothing happened. <laughs> That's what Aqua did. And they sent Joe back down as well. Kuse is in trouble. Okay. You just mentioned Omega was really reactive. In game one. During game number one right now, they're dictating the pace, everything. Although RSG had a good start uh, with the first turtle, Andoryu still was able to steal the turtle plus get a kill on to Aqua, but the problem was the response from the Raiders. For and sure. this time, Omega, in terms of pickoff, this is where you see Omega shine. They have uh, they have a huge advantage in terms of early map presence because of Okir's Luyi, because of the diversion. So uh, th this begs me the question, what happens when it comes to the second turtle? 
Will it be on the favor of RSG once again? Oh, no, 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 no. Best believe the second turtle is going to be about the same situation. Uh, Ukir should try and throw Chakno into an odd angle. But here's the thing. Omega has a better way of adjusting. Omega has all of the incentive to actually switch up their approach so that what happened in the first turtle doesn't happen again. So maybe this time find uh, Irad sooner. Uh, don't touch light, like, like don't bother with him because he's just gonna taunt y'all and then make that initiation null. There's an AOG. That should definitely help OMG though, right? Because yeah. it's an early AOG, shouldn't be up in time for this turtle. Yeah. Plus, uh, the beauty of this is Nimber just picked up his Thunder Belt. Although he's not gonna be part of this turtle clash potentially, but look at this Mega just suddenly bursting out the turtle as Shaknu zones out light and Irad. Here is the threat. This is the threat of the Belleric compared to the uh, Johead. Johead, you, single target. Shaknu AoE crowd control with the Wrath of Dryad. If both of these uh, players from RG just suddenly walked up there, Chakno's gonna cast it right away. Right? And he has all uh, of the tools to even get out of there too. With their vitalize the punch and diversion into this little corner here. I wonder if Kusei knows. Oh! Chakno. Okay. Right. The taunt's not gonna connect though. Okay. What did I tell you, right? Second turtle looked exactly the way I told you it was gonna look. It went to the favor of Omega. But a lot, especially, helped with Jome's burst onto Aqua. That literally gave them a slight gold lead advantage. I believe it went up to 200, it switched to Omega's side. Mm -hmm. So, Big J really doing big things as Ryota with the combinations once again. That's a huge kill onto Kosei's Moskov as they get a turret down bottom. How about he does it again, right? I asked that same question, does Kusei know? And apparently it's not a matter of if you know, but when you know they're gonna strike and Kusei didn't even get a chance to flicker out of there. So with that said, clearly Omega now in the driver's seat, 2,000 gold ahead at six minutes in. They could only have hoped and dream. Wait, 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 wait. All right, they could have only hoped for this to have been the situation in game one. But there's a diversion waiting for Irad as Andor, you cast the Temples of Blades. He didn't even need Okir and Chaknu. Fellas, I appreciate the gesture, but the Curly Nightmares got this on lock. <laughs> Wow, uh, th we've been seeing a lot of anime fights between these two junglers, specifically Andorio and Iran. Finally, someone died during that clash. It was always a, it was always an almost kill. Both of these uh, junglers always manages to escape, but this time, Andorio made sure the Wiggy Shadow Kill wasn't there before he cast the Templars of Blades, and all the Defiant Swords connect, bringing down Irad. Which is odd. I think that was Irad just feeling himself a little too much, because he pulled the trigger on the Wiggy Shadow Kill sooner. And then I guess Andorio had minions to, to, to share the damage with him. So now, final turtle already spawned up. Look at this, Andorio's bothering Kusei this time, all the way down bottom. Yeah. Doing best of the both worlds, gonna create a push down bottom, get the turret as much as possible, at the same time be right there on time for his purple buff and the turtle as Omega controlling uh, controlling much of the... What do you call that? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Here comes of the battlefield. Chakno checks in. Okay, he hasn't cast yet the Wrath of Dryad, but five members of Omega are here to make sure to zone oh. out RSG. Quad Shadow for Irad out, and again, no trade for the Raiders. Amazing work here by the Barangay RSG, doing their best, and this time, oh, the tables flipped. Kusei! Chakno! What an amazing backdoor play! Cuts off the exit route of Kosei with the taunt! And he didn't even get the flicker again! Yeah, Chaknu didn't even use any of his battle spells. That's how fast Omega's planning and communications were. Uh, well, are now. In game two, eight minutes in, they're about 4,000 gold ahead. And I thought, I thought... Jose, I thought that the turtle take, the denial of the steal from Irad oh. would have been the oh. icing on the cake, and here oh. we go! Here comes the diversion of the Barangay, bringing every member as they take down Irad. Light is the next oh. target. Ryota will pick him up as Aqua tries to walk away. We've seen Omega send out Chaknu, but this time... The whole Barangay was present for that clash. Call it an Omega Bomb. They go into that bush all in, 110% full send. And all this while, bottom lane was getting pushed in. Like, that's that's where Andorio was about a minute ago. Yeah. During uh, the, the, the pre-Lord take. And now, Omega have all of the time in the world. They, they have all of the lanes pushed in. Lord has, what, about 30 seconds to come onto the map. 
it's amazing how they've pivoted. I, I don't know if I can say right now if it's all Ilkukir. I think it's also just their mindset changed too. Yeah, my, of course chemistry plays a huge part. I mean, they've worked on this five-man lineup since the latter parts of last season. They gelled so well. And again, a big factor was Ilkukir, specifically his hero. Because those diversion plays, we've seen two good diversion plays from Ilkukir. Him and Chakra's hero. Yeah. It begs to be said that the Mamba is, is good on the jawhead, but he's great on the Bellerick. And even Ryota, we have to commend Ryota because game one, not a good game at all for Ryota. But game two, his first flicker, Earth Shatter combination connected onto Kosei. Mm. So this time he's feeling himself, really confident, making sure to get those uh, to get those uh, crowd control. And the best part is Kosei has a flicker, so it's, it's easy. It's an easier catch. Easier. Easier. All right, folks, well, we're not saying that what Ryota's easy. doing is easy. Easier. It's just more likely. And more often than not, he won't even get the press flicker yeah. nor his dash. That's been the story of this game so far, 10 minutes in. 0-2-0, the Kamai King, Kusei, cannot, cannot get away from Omega. Almost 100%. Whenever somebody's sent over to take him down, he just takes it. All the lanes pushing in now. Smart Omega. Almost 10k ahead. What? How do we get here? Almost 10k! I mean, look at the map. All inhibitor, just inhibitor turrets left for RSG. Plus total dominance of the jungle minions here for Omega, specifically Andoryu. And now the problem for RSG is Nibber played a good game during game number one. But this game, even if he connects with the final slash, if Chak lose part of that catch, it could go south for Ooh, RSG. Don't regret it. There's and a diversion onto again. the back. And Chaknu hasn't cast its ultimate yet, but Jom goes in with order and brilliance and brings down Kosei and Aqua. Lord marching in light AOG just to delay Bariota and Andoryu brings him down. It's going to be a four on two battle. Ira, the mechanic still alive, dishing out the shurikens as Omega works on the middle lane turret. Look at the damage coming in from Ukir though. Here it has to walk away there. Luckily, their minion spawn, but Omega wants to end this game as quickly as possible. Oh. Nimor, Ira just trying to delay Kosei one more second before he respawns. They have minions, but Andoryu says no to Ira, and it looks like we are going to a game three, but RSG still holding on. The Raiders say not just yet. As Smart Mega clean up house, taking down the final turret up top. It's just a bare base left to RSG. Okay, Jones not yet in the picture as Ryota pops his primal wrath to dish out the damage onto the minion. Shaknu using the Wrath of Dryad here. It's gonna be a four on four, but Barangay is really low here. Nimbor. Whoa! Will he go for the catch? AOG coming in from light. Sends out the Omega home, but here's the diversion play to walk away. Abort, abort! Abort mission. Not just yet. Smart Omega. Pushed hard enough, just enough to take down all the inhibitors and not get punished, all right? They lost Big J along the way, but looking at the situation right now, the items, the gold, that's more than 2,000 gold between Kusei and Big J. Former imports sent out from the MPL to spread the good word of our MLBB prowess. Now back home, showing the world once again why you gotta watch MPL Philippines. Kusei, again, still 100%, right? Like, whenever Omega sent somebody take him down, this time it was Big J, there's nothing he can do. Uh, would you, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, not gonna press it. Would you agree that maybe it should have been a purify? It should have been a purify. I mean, apart from the, the Ryota or Shatter onward combination alone, is enough for uh, most, uh, not most, technically, because uh, gold laners here in the Philippines are so good, but it's enough for most people to actually resort to the purify instead of the flicker. Why are you talking so soft right now? Why? Oh, I'm so sorry. Because right. the game's so intense. Are people online wanting us to just talk like casters <laughs> and not shout casters? Man, we have to shout because this game is amazing, especially if RSG manages to pull off a huge <laughs> defense. Again, it's not impossible because Nibor, one catch could uh, secure the job for RSG, but again, the question remains, if you catch Chaknu, Will that actually benefit you or benefit Omega? And here's the thing, Chaknu doesn't mind getting caught out. He's not, he's not even died once. Oh, the and now he's gonna get sent back over again. Again, delivery for Omega, Chaknu. But look at Jom onto the back line, sending three Raiders down to the base as Okir picks up another kill and Ryota tower locks. We are going to a Friday game number three. We're off to a banger already just to open up day one of week eight. Is it just me, Jose? Is it just me? 
Or did it feel like a grand finals win as we just go to game three?